The judge in the Terra Luna of the SEC case recently stated unequivocally that he would not be adhering to the finding in the Ripple case, and this has sparked a lot of discussion. Many people are already publicly stating that this renders the Ripple judgment illegitimate. It raises new concerns regarding the possibility that XRP is a security. I'll show you what some of the room's smartest attorneys have to say about what just transpired in this video. Regardless of how this will affect the Ripple ruling and XRP in the future, it is important to address it immediately. There are numerous conversations going on regarding it. By the time this video is over, you'll know exactly what this decision means and whether it has any bearing on XRP. So be sure to watch the entire video to get a look at this. Overall though, I just thought this was a really amazing concept, regardless of the promotion. I believe it merely demonstrates Uphold's ongoing efforts to establish itself as a significant figure in the XRP community. And I'm completely in favor of always having our backs. Because they anticipated that XRP wouldn't be classified as a security, they stated it throughout the entire case. I therefore always attempted to have their backs in whatever situation. If you haven't already, have a look. However, I want to go on and discuss what transpired recently in the Terra Luna case. Thus, in case you were unaware, the SEC has filed a lawsuit against Doquin and Terra Luna on the grounds that Doquin's Luna Foundation issued unregistered securities. The Terra Luna Foundation and Doquin, of course, replied, wait, look at this case right here. AC Judge Torres said that Ripple was able to sell XRP in ways that did not constitute a securities transaction. They pointed to the Ripple case and remarked, as a result, we want to argue that Terra Luna was sold in the same manner. Our sales shouldn't be considered a securities transaction as a result. In essence, what is occurring is that Terra Luna and Doquin are applying the judgment from the Ripple case and claiming that we should also be exempt from securities law in light of this current case. So curiously enough, this caused a stir on Twitter since everyone was speculating as to whether or not the judge would accept this judgment. And before we continue, I want to quickly give you some background information about the Terra Luna case's judge. Funny enough, and practically every cryptocurrency case to far, Metalaman, who I believe you should pay attention to when it comes to law, has been right on the money. He declared openly that the Terra Luna case's judge truly enjoys dissenting from other judges in the same circuit. This judge is reportedly notorious for just opposing another judge in the circuit, regardless of whether or not that judge is applying the law correctly. And I believe it's crucial to state that he wasn't making this statement in reaction to the problems I discuss in this video. He made this statement regarding this judge two to three months ago. He therefore predicted the occurrence of this particular circumstance. Moving on, let's discuss what actually occurred. As a result, the Terra Luna case's judge publicly declared that she disagreed with Judge Torres' reasoning regarding how Ripple might sell XRP in a manner that did not qualify as a securities transaction. On the surface, that could appear to be a terrible thing, but I believe it's crucial that we look at what some legal experts have to say about it to understand precisely whether or not this will have an influence on the XRP moving ahead. Let me be clear about some misinformation going around Stuart Alderati stated. Nothing about the Ripple decision that XRP is not a security has changed as a result of the Terra Luna case decision. Additionally, the Terra Luna lawsuit is still in its early stages, and the judge has thus far accepted the SEC's allegations as accurate. Our decision followed a thorough factual record that was compiled over a period of more than two years in legal precedent. I'll let others delve into the Terra judge's comments, such as his apparent misinterpretation of the Ripple judge's justification, ignoring the point that secondary market traders cannot invest money in anyone or anything if they are unsure of who they are purchasing from, as an example. Stuart Alderati is claiming right here that this has no bearing on the Ripple SEC lawsuit. Still, XRP is not a security. He also kind of pokes fun at the judge, stating, it seems like this guy might have missed a few things in his initial reading. It's crucial to realize that many of these judges have little to no familiarity with cryptocurrencies. Getting thrust into one of these scenarios is quite difficult. Therefore, it will take him some time to fully comprehend what is happening. The judge didn't technically say that Judge Torres made a mistake because this was essentially the first trial. He was simply stating his disagreement with her reasoning. Therefore, I believe we will have to wait and see how this all turns out. But it's crucial to remember that it truly makes no difference either way. Unlike Judge Torres, this judge is not on a higher circuit. Therefore, it makes no difference if he disagrees with her. Just his opinion, really. It's crucial to realize that Judge Torres' ruling is still valid and that the Ripple SEC case won't be impacted in any way by this. Additionally, we must recognize that much of what this court said in this case supports what Court Torres said. Many individuals on Twitter, particularly the Bitcoin Maxis, attempted to make it appear as though the judge disagreed with everything Judge Torres stated whenever the judge remarked, oh, we're disagreeing with Judge Torres. That was false. Stuart Alderady reminds out right here that Tyra Judge actually admits that without the pledge to cultivate those groves and share earnings, the orange groves alone are not security. 
An investment contract cannot exist without consent between the contracting parties, and he specifically stated this. What does that imply then? In other words, he fully concurs that the tokens themselves are not securities. This was always the major problem, as I have stated when the Ripple SEC lawsuit began. XRP's status as a security was at issue. Therefore, it appears as though the judge in the Terra Luna case may be at odds with Judge Torres in saying, oh, there are a couple more sales that you didn't rule were securities that I think might be securities. However, it appears that they all concur that XRP is not secure in and of itself. And this is the most crucial lesson we should learn from this. They both concur that XRP is not a security. People are making it seem as though this decision invalidates the claim that XRP is not a security. No, they concur totally on that point. Security is not XRP. They might simply disagree on which Ripple transactions qualify as securities transactions. Now that you've considered it from this angle, this decision appears much less frightening. A judge who was only now beginning to comprehend a highly difficult subject and a highly complex case. It was the initial decision, and he is now openly admitting that the tokens themselves are not securities. Yes, everyone has the right to their own view, but as I've already demonstrated, Meta Lawman pointed out that this judge frequently differs from other judges in his circuit. Therefore, he might have had different opinions from Judge Torres about some of the actual transactions. His unwavering agreement that the token itself is not a security, however, is a huge slap in the face to the SEC. This was the crypto industry's black swan. This was XRP's black swan event. What's more, even judges who want to support the SEC, like the library judge, are refusing to make the ludicrous assumption that the token itself may qualify as a security. In the library case, the judge sided with the SEC almost entirely. Even he admitted publicly that he was unwilling to name the token security. This hoax has been promoted by the SEC for some time, because is their only chance to slow down Ripple and XRP. Bitcoin and Maxis really want their conspiracy hypothesis to be true. Bitcoin and Maxis understands that Bitcoin would never prevail technologically. They'll be able to stop it with the help of their fervent regulators. Regulators like the SEC don't actually have the authority to do that, which is kind of amusing. They're attempting to bend the law because of this. That is why they are attempting to invent these totally original concepts, such as the asset serving as the security. They're trying to make everything up in order to incorporate cryptocurrencies under their control. But in the end, it appears that virtually every legal expert out there utterly disagrees with their viewpoint. The most encouraging aspect of the future period is that the one saving grace we have seen is that the courts have not been willing to blindly agree with these regulators to rubber stamp everything they are saying. Instead, they have pushed back based on the actual law and confirmed what individuals like John Deaton have been saying since day one of the Ripple SEC case. The token itself, the orange groves, the whiskey, the beavers, those things will never be securities. The investments packaging is important. This theory didn't support how the SEC wanted to govern the sector. Thus, they were desperately trying to move away from it. However, in the end, they are utterly failing and the court's rulings are taking precedence. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. It truly means so much.